like you remember, you know, the world was going to end, and, and I had to find the devil and kill the devil before the world ended. That's, that's the last thought that I had. Do you know that uh, you were actually chewing on her flesh, allegedly, when the cops came? No, I didn't, I didn't know. The next thing I remember is waking up in a room by myself, and it was horrible. Can you imagine a rapper saying this being in prison after a life sentence? That's strange. Imagine the aftermath of being handed a life sentence. It's a moment steeped in disbelief. Yet here we are, about to delve into the intriguing reactions of various rappers faced with this stark reality. Join us as we navigate through the complexities, shedding light on how these rappers confront fame, fortune, and the unforgiving edges of the justice system. Big Lurch. Big Lurch's journey through the rap game was marked by flashes of brilliance, his gritty lyricism and commanding presence earning him a modicum of recognition within the underground circuit. Yet, it was his descent into the abyss of drug addiction that ultimately thrust him into infamy. In the early 2000s, Big Lurch's life took a nightmarish turn that would forever alter his legacy. In April of 2002, the rapper, fueled by a potent cocktail of PCP and paranoia, committed an act so grisly that it would send shockwaves throughout the hip-hop community and beyond. The victim of this macabre tragedy was Tinisha Isais, a 21-year-old woman whose life was brutally cut short in a manner that defies rational explanation. Isaias was found in her apartment, her chest torn asunder, with grotesque evidence suggesting that portions of her lung had been savagely consumed. The scene of horror didn't end with Isaias' grisly demise. Big Lurch, his mind warped by the effects of PCP, was discovered wandering the streets in a daze, his visage smeared with blood, a haunting tableau of madness and violence. The ensuing legal proceedings would offer little solace to those seeking answers in the wake of such senseless brutality. Singleton, standing trial for murder and aggravated mayhem, opted to plead not guilty because of insanity, citing his drug-induced psychosis as a mitigating factor in the heinous crime he had perpetrated. Despite Singleton's plea of insanity, the courts remained resolute, delivering a verdict that would irrevocably alter the course of his life. Acknowledging the influence of PCP on his actions, they deemed it insufficient to absolve him of responsibility for the heinous crime. Consequently, Antron Singleton, the artist formerly known as Big Lurch, was sentenced to spend the rest of his days behind bars, serving a life sentence for his barbaric deeds. In an interview with Geraldo Rivera from the prison, he said, I mean, all I can remember, you know, the world was going to end, and I had to find the devil and kill the devil before the world ended. That's, that's the last thought that I had. Do you know that uh, you were actually chewing on her flesh, allegedly, when the cops came? No, I didn't, I didn't know. The, the, the next thing I remember is waking up in a room by myself, and it was horrible. Before this tragic chapter, Big Lurch had shown glimpses of promise within the rap scene. Hailing from the vibrant streets of South Central Los Angeles, he had emerged as a formidable presence, his raw lyricism and commanding delivery earning him respect among his peers. Yet, beneath the surface of his burgeoning career lay a tumultuous personal life marked by struggles with addiction and inner demons. As he navigated the treacherous waters of the music industry, Big Lurch found himself increasingly drawn to the seductive allure of drugs, a temptation that would ultimately consume him in a maelstrom of chaos and despair. The events of that fateful April night would serve as a grim epilogue to Big Lurch's once promising career, casting a pall of darkness over his legacy that would prove impossible to shake. In the aftermath of his incarceration, his name would become synonymous not with lyrical prowess or artistic innovation, but with the darkest depths of human depravity. C. Murder on August 25th, the hip-hop world buzzed with anticipation as the latest developments in Corey C. Murder Miller's quest for freedom took center stage. Despite serving a life sentence, C. Murder's spirit remained unbroken, his resolve unwavering. I'm still fighting this case. They're gonna let me out eventually. His words, reverberating from the confines of his incarceration, Recent events cast a spotlight on C. Murder's legal battle, offering glimmers of hope amid the shadows of injustice. Witnesses once pivotal in his conviction have recanted their testimonies, their voices echoing like distant echoes of redemption. These shifts, coupled with the growing support from influential figures, hint at a potential avenue for a retrial. C. Murder's journey from the pinnacle of rap stardom as part of No Limit Records to the depths of a life sentence for the murder of 16-year-old Steve Thomas is a narrative steeped in tragedy and legal intricacies. 
The events of January 12, 2002, at Louisiana's Platinum Nightclub, where Thomas met his untimely demise, serve as a haunting backdrop to the ongoing saga. Central to see Murder's conviction were the testimonies of witnesses who claimed to have seen him pull the trigger. However, the foundation of certainty upon which his guilt rested has begun to crumble. Attorney Philip C. Hamilton laid bare the case's fragility, highlighting the absence of tangible evidence and the reliance on witness statements. In a dramatic turn of events, one such witness, Kenneth, penned an affidavit in 2018, alleging coercion and retracting his identification of C. Murder as the assailant. Another, Darnell, echoed this sentiment, affirming the rapper's innocence. Despite these revelations, the legal machinery has been slow to respond, denying C. Murder the retrial he seeks. Yet, hope persists amidst the shadows. Kim Kardashian's advocacy, alongside prominent civil rights attorneys Ben Crump and Ronald Haley Jr., injects renewed momentum into the fight for justice. C. Murder's hunger strike earlier this year, protesting inhumane conditions and solitary confinement, serves as a visceral reminder of his steadfast determination. Beyond the courtroom drama, broader discussions on identity and community resonate deeply. The concept of the black card emerges as a focal point, prompting reflection on who holds the authority to claim blackness and the complexities of racial identity in contemporary society. The recent clash between Amber Rose and Jocelyn Hernandez on BT's College Hill underscores the intricacies of these discussions, illustrating the tangled web of race, ethnicity, and culture. From historical legacies to present-day debates, the question of what it truly means to be black takes center stage. Furthermore, attention turns to mental health within the black community, a topic often shrouded in stigma. Lorenzo Lewis's journey from adversity to advocacy through the I Confess Project illuminates the transformative potential of grassroots initiatives in addressing mental health disparities. As C. Murder continues to fight from behind bars, his story serves as a rallying cry for justice and a testament to the resilience of the human spirit in the face of adversity. YFN Lucci YFN Lucci, known offstage as Ray Sean Bennett, found himself at a crossroads as his legal battles unfolded. Facing a litany of charges, including felony murder and violations of Georgia's anti-gang laws, the embattled rapper navigated the complexities of the justice system with a heavy burden. For three years, the specter of a life sentence loomed over him, a consequence of his alleged involvement in a gang-related drive by shooting that resulted in the death of one of his passengers. Amidst the legal maelstrom, Lucci maintained his innocence, steadfastly refusing to cooperate with authorities in any other case. Yet, on a pivotal Tuesday in January, the narrative took a turn. YFN Lucci made a fateful decision, accepting a plea deal in his Georgia Rico case. In doing so, he admitted guilt to one count of violating the Street Gang, Terrorism, and Prevention Act. It was a strategic maneuver aimed at avoiding the direst outcome, a lifetime behind bars. In exchange for his plea, prosecutors dropped several charges, including the weighty accusation of felony murder. The relief of dodging a potential life sentence was palpable, yet the consequences remained significant. Lucci faced a 20-year sentence with a mandate to serve a decade in custody, followed by probation. Atlanta rapper YFN Lucci was sentenced to 10 years in prison. The rapper, whose real name is Ray Sean Bennett, pleaded guilty to one count of violation of the Street Gang Terrorism and Prevention Act. He is one of a dozen men indicted on racketeering and RICO charges back in 2021. The group's charges are related to alleged involvement with the Bloods Street Gang. According to court documents, prosecutors could write a letter to the parole board recommending release when eligible, but records show he has been in jail for nearly three years. However, a glimmer of hope emerged as he received credit for three years of time served. Eligible for parole in a mere three and a half months, the rapper saw a faint path to freedom. The legal saga had been arduous, marked by years of pre-trail litigation, extensive jury selection, and the prolonged agony of incarceration awaiting trial. Finally, the resolution came albeit not without its sacrifices. Lucci's legal team expressed a sense of vindication as the most severe charges were dismissed. The long-awaited closure offered a semblance of resolution, even as the scars of the ordeal lingered. After three years of pretrial litigation, more than two weeks of jury selection and three years of incarceration waiting for his jury trial, today, the prosecution finally relented and dismissed the murder and RICO charges against Sean Bennett his lawyers told ABC News. As he has maintained for three years now, Mr. Bennett will not cooperate in any other case. 
Prosecutors had painted a damning portrait of YFN Lucci, alleging his role as the driver in a fatal drive-by shooting steeped in the trappings of gang violence. His apology to the victim's family at sentencing underscored the gravity of the situation, a moment of reflection amidst the legal tumult. The arrest in 2021 marked a critical juncture in Lucci's journey, thrusting him into the spotlight of a sweeping RICO indictment targeting alleged Bloods gang members. The subsequent charges compounded the gravity of his predicament, encompassing racketeering, aggravated assault, and firearm offenses. Now, as the prospect of parole loomed on the horizon, YFN Lucci faced a pivotal juncture in his tumultuous saga. With his release potentially imminent, the rapper and his legal team harbored cautious optimism. Prosecutors signaled their lack of objection to his parole, paving the way for a possible return to freedom. For YFN Lucci, the road ahead remained uncertain, fraught with challenges and uncertainties. Yet, as he grappled with the ramifications of his choices, the promise of a new chapter beckoned, a chance to rebuild amidst the wreckage of a tumultuous past. Max B., in 2009, Max B., born Charlie Wingate, faced the weight of justice with a 75-year prison sentence following his involvement in a deadly armed robbery. The severity of the sentence cast a shadow over his promising career in hip-hop, leaving his fans stunned and dismayed. However, recent developments have sparked hope among supporters, as news broke that Max B.'s sentence has been shortened, offering him a chance at early release. On 16th of September 2016, Wiz Khalifa took to Twitter to share the uplifting news, revealing that Max B., despite his initial lengthy sentence, is now set to leave jail ahead of schedule. This unexpected turn of events has reignited optimism among fans, who eagerly anticipate Max B's return to freedom and the possibility of a resurgence in his music career. Well, I went back on post-conviction. Uh, my sentence was vacated for 35 years, so I got back on. Um, my first appeal was denied, then when I went back on post-conviction, I was uh, I found ineffective assistance against my lawyer. And before the case was came back for it, before the judge made an actual decision or decided to turn the whole case over, we just I just plead, I pleaded out. I couldn't go through. Uh, I couldn't go through waiting for another decision or the courts you know, or another letdown. So I just I took the 20. So that with my with my time, man, and once I go down, once I get once I get full minimum, I'll be down to about 12, 12 and a half years, which I have me in uh I'll be in a camp I'll be in a camp February and by the end of next year I'll be in a halfway house. Max B's journey into the rap scene began amidst the vibrant streets of Harlem, New York, where he honed his skills in freestyle battles and underground sippers. Immersed in the rhythm and energy of the city, he found his voice amidst the pulsating beats and lyrical prowess of hip-hop culture. With each verse, Max B's talent and charisma captivated those around him, earning him a reputation as a rising star in the local scene. In 2006, Max B's dedication and talent caught the attention of Jim Jones, a prominent figure in the rap game and fellow Harlem native. Recognizing Max's potential, Jones wasted no time in offering him a platform to showcase his skills, signing him to the Bird Gang label. This pivotal moment catapulted Max B into the spotlight of the hip-hop world, setting the stage for his ascent to prominence and cementing his place among the genre's elite. However, Max B's ascent was abruptly halted in 2009 when he found himself entangled in the legal fallout of a deadly armed robbery. Alongside his stepbrother Kelvin Leardam, Max faced serious charges, including accusations of first-degree murder and robbery, resulting in the harsh 75-year sentence that seemed to extinguish any hope of his return to the music scene. Yet, even behind bars, Max B refused to be silenced. He continued to create music, maintaining a connection with his fans and keeping his spirit alive amidst the confines of prison. Now, with news of his sentence being shortened, Max B stands on the cusp of a new chapter, one filled with hope and the possibility of redemption. In a statement addressing the recent developments, Max B emphasized the importance of perseverance in the face of adversity, thanking his fans for their unwavering support throughout his ordeal. This proceeding was not a question of my guilt or innocence, but about the bad advice poor judgment, and overall ineffectiveness of my trial attorney, Max remarked, shedding light on the complexities of his legal battle. As Max B's story continues to unfold, one thing remains certain. His resilience and determination serve as a beacon of hope for all those who face seemingly insurmountable challenges. Whether behind bars or on the stage, Max B's legacy endures as a testament to the power of the human spirit to overcome adversity and rise above. Tory Lanez. 
Eight months following his conviction for shooting Megan the Stallion in the foot, Tory Lanez received a 10-year prison sentence. In response, he issued a statement addressing his supporters, known as the Umbrellas. Lines addressed misconceptions about his courtroom admission of responsibility, stating, in no way, shape, or form was I apologizing for the charges I'm being wrongfully convicted of. I remain on the stance that I refuse to apologize for something that I did not do. Tory Lanez, born Daystar Peterson, emerged onto the hip-hop scene with a blend of melodic rap and R&B influences, carving out a niche for himself in the music industry. Raised in Brampton, Ontario, Canada, Lanes faced adversity from a young age, growing up in a tumultuous environment marked by poverty and family struggles. Despite these challenges, Lanes found solace and inspiration in music, honing his craft and turning to his innate talent as a means of escape. Lanes's journey into the world of hip-hop began in his teenage years, when he started releasing mixtapes under the moniker Notorious Lanes. His early work caught the attention of industry insiders, laying the groundwork for his eventual breakthrough onto the mainstream stage. Lanes's distinctive style, characterized by his versatile flow and emotive delivery, quickly garnered him a dedicated fan base and critical acclaim within the hip-hop community. In 2016, Lanes achieved widespread recognition with the release of his debut studio album, I Told You, which featured hit singles such as Say It and Louvre. The album showcased Lanes' ability to seamlessly blend rap and R&B influences, solidifying his position as one of the most promising talents in the industry. With each subsequent release, Lanes continued to push the boundaries of his artistry, experimenting with different sounds and collaborating with a diverse range of artists. However, Lanes's career took a tumultuous turn in 2020 when he found himself embroiled in a highly publicized controversy involving fellow rapper Megan Thee Stallion. The incident, which occurred in July of that year, saw Lanes being accused of shooting Megan Thee Stallion in the foot following a dispute. Despite vehemently denying the allegations, Lanes faced mounting pressure from both the media and the public, with many calling for accountability and justice. In the wake of the controversy, Lanes's career faced a significant setback, with several venues canceling his performances and streaming platforms distancing themselves from his music. The legal ramifications of the incident loomed large, casting a shadow over Lanes's once promising future in the music industry. Despite the challenges he faced, Lanes remained resolute in his determination to clear his name and salvage his reputation. Now, with news of his sentencing to 10 years in prison, Lanes finds himself at a crossroads, grappling with the consequences of his actions and the impact they have had on his life and career. In his statement addressing the sentence, Lanes expressed gratitude to his supporters, acknowledging their unwavering loyalty and steadfast belief in his innocence. However, he also remained steadfast in his refusal to apologize for something he maintained he did not do, signaling his intent to continue fighting for justice and redemption. Tay K. Tay K has penned a heartfelt letter to his fans contemplating his life in prison and expressing his belief that his murder sentence was unjust. On Thursday, March 30th, 2023, Tay K shared an image of a letter he wrote from prison on his Instagram page, addressing his supporters. In the letter, the incarcerated rapper opens up about his experiences behind bars and reflects on his 55-year murder sentence. I've been here for five on two years now, and I feel indebted to y'all for going so crazy behind me, he writes. It's still crazy to me that I never had a chance to live outside as an adult. Tay K also expresses frustration over the circumstances of his conviction, stating, I've been locked up and in and out of the justice and CPS system for my whole life. Not sure if y'all know, but I got sentenced as an adult to 55 years in prison for a crime where I wasn't even the shooter. I wasn't even alleged to have a gun. I was never even suspected to have pulled a trigger or hurt anyone. He acknowledges his troubled past and the lack of positive influences in his life during his youth, but he now recognizes the importance of setting a positive example for others. Now that I'm older, I know how important focusing on leading by example is, he writes. I love my fans, and I don't want anyone to think I'm promoting or really recommending violence. Tay K reveals that he is using his time in prison to make a positive impact, particularly on young artists. He states that he provides guidance to aspiring musicians through letters and phone calls, aiming to keep them inspired and focused on constructive pursuits. Despite his remorse and efforts to reform, Tay K's legal troubles stem from a serious crime committed in his adolescence. Found guilty of murder 
murdering 21-year-old Ethan Walker during a home invasion in his hometown in the Dallas-Fort Worth area. Tay K was tried as an adult even though he was 16 at the time of the crime in 2016. The incident occurred during a robbery where Walker was fatally shot. Born Tamor Trayvon McIntyre, Tay K's early life was marked by adversity and instability. Raised in the Dallas-Fort Worth area, he faced challenges from a young age, navigating a turbulent environment characterized by poverty and crime. Despite these obstacles, Tay K found solace and expression in music, channeling his experiences into his artistry. Tay K's music career initially gained traction with the release of his viral hit The Race, which he recorded while on the run from authorities. The song captured the attention of audiences worldwide, but it also drew scrutiny due to its subject matter and the circumstances surrounding its creation. Tay K's legal troubles only intensified when he was apprehended by law enforcement and faced additional charges related to his fugitive status. A.R. Ab. The court don't understand my culture, the rapper insisted after a case that scrutinized his lyrics and social media persona. We don't rap about flowers and rainbows, we're gangsta rappers. A.R. Ab, a luminary in Philadelphia's rap scene, once commanded attention with his raw lyrics and unapologetic portrayal of street life. But on the day, a federal judge handed down a staggering 45-year prison sentence. Abdul West, the man behind the persona, faced the harsh reality of his choices. From the outset, West's journey was marked by adversity and hardship. Raised in the unforgiving streets of North Philly, he found solace and expression in rap music, channeling his experiences into lyrics that resonated with a generation. His rise to prominence wasn't without its controversies, as his music often blurred the lines between art and reality. Throughout his trial, West's artistic persona came under intense scrutiny. Prosecutors dissected his lyrics and social media presence, arguing that they were more than mere entertainment. They were confessions of criminal activity. Despite assertions from his legal team that his music was a reflection of his environment rather than an admission of guilt, the court saw it differently. The sentencing proceedings were laden with tension as West, defiant in his demeanor, clashed with the legal system. He decried what he saw as a fundamental misunderstanding of his culture, insisting that gangsta rap was an authentic reflection of the harsh realities he grew up in. However, the judge remained steadfast, emphasizing that West's actions spoke louder than his words. The case not only raised questions about the authenticity of gangsta rap, but also delved into the broader issue of how art inter sex with real-life consequences. West's music, once celebrated for its gritty realism, now served as evidence against him, a stark reminder of the fine line between artistic expression and criminal behavior. That's a wrap on the video. If you enjoyed it, check out one of these boxes, too. I'll catch you on the next one.